Now here's a lovely example of a problem that's a little bit awkward and tricky, but it resembles a problem we're used to. Okay, so if we're trying to figure out where all you know how we draw this um, sphere and cone in contact, it's kind of messy. So one way to think about any of these kind of graphics problems is how can I make it into an easier problem and solve the easy problem and then I put it back to the hard one. So that's what we're going to do here. This would be a much easier problem if the ball was around here. We'd be able to see the point of contact there, so we'd solve it up here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to roll the ball back into the easy position, solve it there, and then rotate it back into the hard position. It's easier than it sounds. So, first things first, we're going to draw the cone. Okay? So, like a lot of these cones, we're going to just pop it there. We're going to find the center of it. We'll define a center, just choose a point where it's going to be centered on. And we can go off and draw it. So that is a diameter of 64, so radius of 32. Always make sure to check that. So let's go set this. Now, uh, some of this may be hidden, so again, we're only going to draw it as a construction line for the moment. We'll come back on that one afterwards. So we'll put our XY line in above this. And we'll project this up to it. So each edge just goes to there. And the total height of the cone we have a look at our little drawing here, is 80 millimetres. That's grand. Let's go put this up here. Now, some of this is going to get blocked, I think, so especially on this side. So we'll only draw this as a construction. Uh, the other side, you can see from the drawing, is heavy. So that's grand. We can stick this in as a heavy line. Now, so it would be much easier if the little ball went from there around like this to here. So we'll just check we're fully on camera, so this will come up a little bit. Here we go. So we want to see, can we move this guy around? All right, well, if we were to do this, it's a 50 mil diameter ball, so radius 25. Well, no matter what, we know the center is going to be 25 off the ground. So let's put that in first, that's grand. We'll come over here a little bit. Just mark that off. And that's my center. So I'll put this into green. Because that is a whole collection of points that are 25 off the ground. No matter where this ball is, it's rolling around and so on on it, the center is still in the same position. So we can roll the ball all over the, the, the kind of surface here, and the center is still that high above the ground. Now Time to do that. So what we're going to do is we are going to put it in the easy position here, solve it, and then put it back in the harder position. This will make a bit more sense when you see it done. Okay, well, in the easy position, um, I'm going to use our sliding set square technique. Do, 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 do. So we know that our center is going to be 25 from that edge. So we just slide that by 25. There we go. And we'll draw it in. If you're wondering why I left a tiny gap when I originally measured it, it's because I know this colouring pencil is a bit blunt. So you can double check that. That actually is bang on 25. Okay. And remember, I'm lining up the 0 and the 10 Entire set square is moving by 25, so the edge is there. Now, so this is where it is easy. Let's go and... Okay, we'll just get our little points of contact with the ground. And with the edge here. So again, I'm going to get a perpendicular. There we go. 
Okay, that's a, like a little normal, it's a perpendicular line. So there is my point of contact. Now, what do we know? Well, now you don't need to do this next step, but I'm going to do it to help this make a little bit more sense. This is like we are taking an imaginary one. Just get the, check the size here. You can always do a tiny bit just if you have to. So there we are. There is a is a circle. Now I'm going to go and take this and just sketch it in an orange. Because this is the easy position. And this isn't necessary. It's a chance to try and see what we're doing. Okay. This is the simpler position. All right, well, again, the simpler position is going to be here, down there. So now we have the easier problem solved. Well, let's see, can we go and solve it? Well, we need to go and put that back in the hard position. And the nice thing is, we know something about the hard position. We know the center is on a 45 degree line down there. So that's the first piece of information we can put in place. And mind your compass, by the way, because you're going to have to redraw this circle. So leave it set at, at the right size. So the center is somewhere on that 45 degree line. Well, where is it going to be? We'll just put it back there. So when we rotated this, okay, if we were to roll this around the cone, the center just rolls around like this. And it has to be there. Now, what we'll do is we'll just go back and draw that. So we'll just double check the size of this guy. So my real circle is going to be here. So we've just taken the, the easy center and we've rotated it back to the real position. Now this is where, how do you do that in the elevation? It turns out it's super easy because if the real center is there, we project back up, so it has to be there. It has to be on the 25 millimeter line. That's the real center. And there we go. Now you'll see from the drawing that this can be visible. You may also notice it from the, the plan. We look up here, we'll see the whole thing. So this guy is going to be fully visible there. Now, and then it's just a case of figuring our hidden lines. This is fully visible down to here. And then it disappears behind the cone. I know this because when I look to see the elevation and plan, the cone is kind of sheltered behind it. All right. Now, sometimes you can actually sketch in the dashed lines on the curve with your hand. Might be a little bit easier if you're finding the compass annoying for this. And we'll just go here and finish this off. So, like many things, this is simple when you know how to do it. The whole concept here is we take a difficult problem, like where the real one is, we convert it to a simpler problem with the orange one, solve the simple problem, and then rotate it back. And what you'll find is as we go forward, most of the time we are going to use rotations to make our problem from hard to easy and backwards. Okay, there's another technique you can do by looking at it this way. It's a little bit more awkward at this stage. All right.